Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahee. We got another show for you as we dig into our community and find interesting people who are doing wonderful things, or at least has the, have the promise of doing wonderful things. Today we have as our guest, Kohio Lewis. Um, Kohio is the CEO of the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, which is better known as CH, no, CNHA, CNHA. And you just uh, you just took the job over, huh? Yeah, sure. It's been about a month now. Well, welcome. Yeah, and, thanks for uh, having me. Thank you for reaching out to the public out there. Now, first of all, uh, what does CNHA do? Uh, good question. So the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, the mission is pretty broad. It's to support the development of Native Hawaiians, culturally, politically, economically. So culturally, so politically, economically, so everything. So you, you're right. into, well, you're sort of a developer. Well, you're into Hawaiian development. Hawaiian development, that's I a good way it. to put it. I got it. So, yeah. um, so the, the CNHA, you know, how we execute that mission is in a number of ways. Okay. Number one is we help Native Hawaiians gain access to capital. So granting, lending. So we're, a, we're actually a CDFI lender, which is a Native lender. So we target the most vulnerable population. If my wife is listening, she's going to be saying, I know a Hawaiian who needs capital. <laughs> you know, right here. <laughs> All right, so you guys are in the financial services. We, we are. Yeah, uh, and then we, we execute programs as well. So we work closely with our Hawaiian trusts, our Hawaiian agencies. So uh, that's like OHA, Kamehameha Oha. Schools. Yep, absolutely. Aloliki? Yeah, we do very similar in, in work. They're, they're like a sister agency. Uh, in that we are always trying to identify opportunities to help advance Native Hawaiians. Um, another thing CNHA does, which most people are familiar with, is they execute their annual Native Hawaiian convention. Oh. So this is where... We want to talk a lot about this, yeah. Yeah, about your convention and how people can participate. But before we go there, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about yourself. So how does Kuhil Lewis become CEO of uh, the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement. I mean, what the, you know, what's your, where did it all begin? First of all, where were you born? Here in Honolulu. Uh, I was raised by my grandparents. Where, in, like in Kaka'ako? Ka in Nu'uanu area, above Nu'uanu. So I was born and raised in Nu'uanu. I attended Mai Mai Elementary, Kavananakoa, and then McKinley High School. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so a uh, local boy, born and raised here. I have so one So you're sibling. not one of those uh, private school Kamehameha uh, <laughs> in, in no. endowment types, right? No. no, no, you actually work for your That's job. That's right. <laughs> Okay, That's go right. ahead. So, <laughs> life has taken interesting paths for me. I definitely didn't think that one day I'd be representing a Native Point organization. Uh, but it, you know, it progressed that way. I was a single dad at a young age. Um, I wasn't even 18. I had two kids. Wow. Didn't even graduate from high school, and I was supposed to. So wow, you were you a lot more advanced than I was. I learned the hard way, and it was through uh, those challenges in life that I think I found my, my passion, my drive, which is to help others. Uh, and so I've been f continuing that personal mission. So of mine. you, you when you know, at some point you went to work for somebody, right? Uh, I ran for OHA trustee in 2010, based on that mission and passion that I had, and then I ended up working for OHA after the election as their youth coordinator. So my job was to organize the next generation of leaders to. Uh, help provide them or discover opportunities for their aspiring leaders, right? right? So that's where I started. And then I moved up the, f the food chain at OHA, at right. the Office of Foreign Affairs. So I started my r real career, I guess you would call, at the Office of Foreign Affairs. I moved up to being the division manager for their community outreach program, so overseeing all of their neighborhoods. So islands. division manager is like, uh, right, 20, I mean, it's 22. one of the executive positions at, at uh, the 20, 22 staff, all the neighbor island offices came under my, my watch at the time. Uh, and I didn't know how that evolved, to be honest. I just was so focused on advancing community that 
things just evolve that way. But I have, uh, I have been blessed, to be honest. I've been blessed, and now I have this new and exciting opportunity to continue that work. So this uh, agency that you, you went from OHA to uh, the CEO of the um, CNHA. Mm -hmm. um, now, what, I mean, who, 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 how long has this uh, agency been in existence? I mean, uh, CNHA, how did it all start? CNHA was founded in 2001, August of 2001. There's actually five founders of CNHA. Yeah, let's go to Ray Soon. Uh, Ray Soon, yeah, who is Ray the Soon, uh, ma managing director or something at the city and county. Right. At least he, used he was to one be. of the leaders. He was the deputy director at uh, DHHL at the time. The at Hawaiian Homeland. Correct. Okay. Then you have uh, Harry uh, Sprout. Hardy oh, Sprout, I'm sorry, Hardy Sprout. Hardy Sprout, who yep. did uh, Papa he, Kahi. which is a uh, organization dedicated to health issues. That's right. For Native Hawaiian. And then you had Mahalani Wen, before it was Kamau, right? And she was the head of the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation. So these, I, I assume that these individuals, in addition to their individual selves, were sort of committing their yeah. organizations Yeah, but there's well. two more, but I don't want to No, I'm not going to let you forget okay, them. Okay, 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 I'm going to get So there's Lulani Artag is another one. Who? Lulani. Oh, okay, and, and tell and, us a little bit about her. Well, she's, what, I'm not sure her background. I, I believe it was, um, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't want to screw it up. Uh, but Lulani Artek was one of them, and then the other was Ma, uh, Melody McKenzie from the law school. Now, Melody is the in charge of the uh, program that for Native Hawaiian legal Kahuliao, excellence. Kahuliao, yes, something. he works with Kahuliao at the Native Hawaiian uh, law school. And then Robin Danner was the founding CEO of CNHA. So, so the five people got started, and then they right. hired Robin, correct? Right. And the vision of these leaders in our community at the time was really to create an entity or an organization where Hawaiians could come together and have discussions that weren't being had. In fact, as I understand it at the time, when all of these leaders were in their respective kuleana, they were oftentimes at odds with one another, you know? So this organization was really formed to help Hawaiians and uh, find the, have a, have discussions that were relevant and important to their advancement. Well, great. Hence the and birth so of it, so it was uh, individuals, but also organizations that created this. Correct. Well, they were representing the organizations, and how they saw it was, we need a place to have conversations so that we can talk collectively about how we move forward. So those were the founding principles of CNHA, and it's really grown tremendously. Well, the person then. I knew uh, there, in, in addition to Robin for some time, was this uh, Michelle Calhoun. Yes, Michelle has had the, uh, she's led the organization. She's done wonderful things over the last four she's or five a, she, years. I knew she, she had a background in banking and uh, housing development. Mm -hmm. Ro both, of that. both Robin and Michelle have some financial background. Robin, a banker. Michelle really she was she was with Hawaii Community Assets at one time and then she became the deputy director at the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. So I'm very fortunate to be able to step into the shoes of such yeah, you got some prominent big shoes. wahine, but, right? Uh, when I look down there, you, you look like you got big feet. So uh, <laughs> uh, hoping, uh, I, I know you're going to do great. So tell us a little bit about what do you think uh, some of the issues are for Native Hawaiians uh, in this day and age? Well, I think in some ways we need to revisit the creation of CNHA. Why was it created? We need to have conversations in our community about the direction that we collectively see us going. So I want to I want to revisit our original purpose, which is I get a forum for getting together. people together and That's maybe right. united on, on That's some right. mission. I also think there's a niche in our community to develop our next generation of leaders. So I want to focus on that as well. So looking at programmatic, so I was thinking about maybe like a police academy or, you know, these types of academy, academies where we can groom the next generation of leaders to you, You're talking about a police academy or a something Hawaiian, like a police academy? Something like a police academy. It's a Native Hawaiian police academy. So it's before they get to the actual police academy, we teach them their soft skills, their hard skills, all of the, and we hook them up with mentors so that they can be successful in their roles. I think that's the best thing that we can do is prepare our next generation of leaders for their rightful place in all spectrums of so society. So this academy idea, which is fascinating, um, what you're talking about is, is something akin to uh, an intensive 
a curriculum of leadership training for uh, Hawaii, Native Correct. Hawaiian young people. Yep. What about guys like myself? You know, we could use a little political. Leadership. Well, no, leadership. <laughs> okay, okay. No, uh, yeah, I'll actually, actually let, let, let me put it this way. So I, I mentioned the police academy, but there's multiple branches, right? Right. So that if those that want to get into politics or serving or public service, there will be an academy to support their interests as well. So there will be an academy to, to, to train people how to be, uh, how Whatever to they want to be, but leadership in the... There'll be five strategic academies, as I envision it right now. And it's very premature because this is what is floating around in my head, but this is the direction I want to pursue, where we have a Academies where these uh, upcoming leaders who are coming out of the charter schools, the high schools, have an opportunity to quickly learn the skills and traits of their respect, interests that they have, groom them, hook them up with mentors, and put them in the workforce. So this is like this is like taking somebody. I mean, it, it seems like if you if you do an academy like this, you you got at least uh, two dimensions. I mean, there is. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming because you're targeting Native Hawaiians. There's a cultural aspect to all of this. I oh, mean, yeah. what Hawaiian leadership consists of and all Absolutely. Of but at the same time, you're not, you want people to succeed in, I guess, what we would quotation marks call the real world. Mm -hmm. So you're going to also be teaching skills, I mean, real skills. Real hands-on skills. So That may not be culturally based, but may be necessary in today's culture. Right. Uh, so broader culture. Native Hawaiians are hands-on learners a lot of them, right? So there's plenty of opportunities to go to college if you want to go to college, but what we're focused on is those leaders that want to get their hands um, in the sand and actually start turning dirt and do some work. So this is this is interconnected with the academic portion of things. So they can actually get experiences and be successful in their respective roles. Well, are you anticipating like extern programs and things it, like that? that very likely that there'll be internship opportunities for these kids to actually be, whether it's the trade school with unions, or if it's the police academy riding alongside perhaps a police officer. So they get hands-on experience. So we're actively looking for mentors to help shepherd these, these I'm too uh, young, young to leaders. be a mentor. No way. <laughs> You're a mentor of I want to be a student. You're making this program sound so <laughs> exciting, you know. Let me, let, me, but let, me, let me give you a pitch, though. Okay. Well, a little pitch for the uh, public policy. We'll call it public policy instead of political academy. Okay. And, guys, if you're listening to this, young, guy, young people, look. This is the one job that you, you, you know, you earn the right to decide public policy, which, you know, affects all of our lives, mm -hmm. everybody's life, Hawaiian, the native Hawaiian or non-native Hawaiian that live in the state of Hawaii, maybe even broader. Mm -hmm. And the required skills are like how good you can hold a sign. Right. I mean, where <laughs> else? No, I'm serious. Where else? There's different ways to hold a sign. Uh, they are. Yeah. <laughs> no, really. You you know, you got to get your hands dirty, hold a sign, talk to people. Mm -hmm. I was in a meeting, and the, and the uh, people, young people there were learning, trying to learn how to get involved in uh, political life. Mm -hmm. And they asked me, they said, you know, are we going to school? What should I take up? Should I be a mm -hmm. lawyer? Should I? And I told them, ah, what you need to learn is network marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. five people, five deep, and you could get elected governor. It's true. You know, seriously, true. I, so, I believe that. Yeah, so, Gov, you know, that's an interesting area because our policymakers are so important to the, you know, to they decide the laws that dictate all of our lives. So... And you, as the former governor, I would hope you'd be a part of our public policy oh, academy. Yeah, well, you know, I, I would be delighted to help you in any which <laughs> way. Um, we're going to take a short break right okay. now, and we'll be right back to talk to Kuhil Lewis, and we're going to hear a little bit about this convention. Okay. And what it means for the... Uh, the new, what, what are you going to call them? Kamehameha Academy? No, can't do that. That name's taken. <laughs> so anyway, we'll come back and we'll talk about the academies. For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation, caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org 
to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for all of us. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. If you want to call in, folks, our number is 808-374-2014. That again is 808-374-2014. Send us a question, stomp the guests. That segment of, the, of this program is called Stomp Our Guests. No, I'm only kidding. But if people <laughs> do have a question for you, I hope they do call it. Kohio, this is so interesting. The Leadership Academy idea. I, I'm, you, could, you just told me the name. Yeah, uh, it's the Leadership Academy. The, what's the, you, you got to... You got to show that it's like the Ali Academy or the or the mm. Warrior Academy. What's the what's that Palani Von great uh, song? I, I I don't want to get caught up in the. Which one? Oh uh, yeah, Palani Von did the. Um, Mak Maku doesn't matter, but it was about the Hawaiian warriors. Mm. You know, it's that kind of st st uh, statement. By the way, it's for all uh, men, women, uh, all, any young person who wants to lead. Um, so tell us. Yes. About your convention? Well, the Native Hawaiian Convention really is that opportunity that I was talking to, the vision of the founders where Hawaiians can come together. CNHA, for the last 16 years, has, has consecutively held this convention. And it's, it's been held at the Convention Center, at the Sheraton, and this year, though, we're having it at the Prince Waikiki. So we expect— The Prince Waikiki? Yeah. You guys went uptown, huh? You well, know, I mean, from the convention center <laughs> to the Prince Waikiki. I mean, where are we going to have it next? The Kahala Hilton or, or, or well, what? Hopefully I, at our... I love to see Hawaiians going up down. Hopefully at our Hawaiian uh, Cultural Center once that's built. Oh, Hawaiian Cultural Center. Yeah. Yeah, but I assume that the one reason why you're at the Prince instead of the convention center is cost or something. It, it is, and, and because we have a Native Hawaiian as the managing director there at the Prince, so... Hawaiians working together to accomplish great things. Wow, that's a wonderful story. That's a wonderful story. So that's uh, so you've had the, the this person uh, helping you put the the convention. Absolutely. Together. So we've brought down the cost of the convention. So Pat, we can pass it on to our attendees that well, cost terrific. savings. But the Native Hawaiian Convention is this year. Uh, it'll have a little something for everyone. Okay. So you'll have your policy stream where we can discuss actual issues that or, or laws and policies that are impacting Hawaiians or could be changed to support Hawaiians' advancement. So you have health caucus, education caucus, housing caucus, all discussing issues. Education, housing. Health. Health. There's homestead. Homestead. There's, there's seven caucuses. There's next gen. There's even a next gen caucus where. And that's for the next generation. Next generation can talk about their their future. So we have all of these caucuses, which are policy caucuses, and they're focused on policies that support their respective interests, right? So those policymakers will be in those sessions. And what do they do? They, they try to achieve consensus? Yes. Or? So you have like Papa Olowakahi, you have, um, you have the Native Hawaiian uh, Education Council. You have all of these different organizations who do this work in their day-to-day -day coming together to discuss what laws collectively they can address or what policies we should be introducing. So CNHA is a strong voice on public policy, and it's through our member organizations who bring forth ideas that we're able to accomplish that. Well, uh, you also seem to be unifying people. So you, 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 I, I'm, you know, I'm a little bit of a political novice, and it seems like when you unify people, you, you begin to develop a, a kind of a strength. Yeah, momentum. that's my goal. My goal is to bring people together. I mean, I know that we're not going to ever be able to all agree, but to the extent that we can, we need to have a conversation about uh, where we want to go as Hawaiians, and then we identify the best way forward. 
and you know the consensus should rule at the end of the day and that's what i'm looking at is bringing people together having cons doing some consensus building and moving forward hawaiian adva advancing native wines that's what i'm looking for well i tell you what you know um this idea of uh, bringing people together in, in strength um when is the what is the date of the convention? I think it was sometime October eighth. October eighth to the tenth. It's October eighth to the tenth. Um, and so it's before the general election. It's right before the general election, and that is in part to be strategic, but it's also before the legislative the legislative session. So it's a chance for us to develop priorities, legislative priorities, and potentially introduce them as law. Well, you know there is this this I don't know this belief uh, that some people have that I, you know, frankly don't agree with, but they seem to think that Hawaiians will never agree, so we don't really have to pay too much attention to them. Well, that there'll always be some going right, some going left, and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and the easiest way to ignore something is to say, well, why don't you guys agree and then come and see me, you know? So, and so you're trying to tool. get past some of that. This is one of those ways in which we can have conversation and then look at how we go forward. Uh, so it's consensus, but it's key. You got to have your community behind you if you're going to move policy. Well, that's what you did as an so organizer. Wasn't yeah. It? So that's naturally my background is I've I've organized large events, I've organized rallies, I've organized marches, and I know that without your community and without a degree of consensus it's very hard to move forward. So my goal at CNHA is to bring people together, as I see it. Well, you know, I think people misjudge Hawaiians, though, you know, a, a lot. We, just because we, we you know, we, we, we may not agree, at least initially, on some, on some solution or some way of going, it doesn't mean we don't care. It's a tremendous oh, no. amount of passion that absolutely. goes into these feelings. Yeah, absolutely. It's about it, Hawaiians are very passionate, and I think it's a good thing. I think we need to learn how to harness our energy and focus that energy so that we can have make positive progress. Well, I, I just want, and this is for myself. This is not for your, uh, you know, for your organization or anything. But I just want to say, people should not mistake the fact that we may be passionate about what oh, yeah. we believe in. For a, a disunity. I mean, my dad used to talk to me, you know, he used to say, you know what family is? Family is where we people can go and argue and talk, mm -hmm. and everybody think it's noise, but don't threaten one member of our family because we'll all be there to make sure that uh, you don't get away with, with the threat. That's a so good point. I, I think people need to understand that there is a core. Mm -hmm. that the Native Hawaiian community be, uh, believes in, and if it's threatened, mm -hmm. um, the whole community mm -hmm. will be affected and will stand up as one. I mean, I believe this. Mm -hmm. I, and I'm hoping uh, C, uh, <coughs> CNHA can facilitate Absolutely. The, the, the uh, organization like this. Me too. And, and you know, there's, there's lots of conversations that need to be have and the, from the community lens, but also our trust leaders. You know, I'm talking about the, very, the respective elite trust. If we can find a way to come together, have conversations about our collective future, that's very powerful. So I think it's on all levels. So the Ali'i Trust, uh, maybe the, our listeners don't know who all of them mm -hmm. are, but I'm assuming you're talking about Kamehameha Schools, mm -hmm. right? You're talking about Lili Okalani Absolutely. Trust. Luna Lilo. Luna Lilo Home. Queens, the Queens, Queens Hospital. Hospital. Yeah. See, people don't Queen know that, but Queens Hospital is a trust. Is a trust. trust. It's a Native Hawaiian trust that yeah. was started by the King Kamehameha IV and uh, his wife, yeah. Queen, uh, Queen Emma. Queen Emma. Then that's why it's called the Queen's yeah. Hospital. Yep. And what's the fifth one? I thought there was. A, uh, oh well, there's OHA. Yeah, well, OHA and DHHL are, st are state entities, but they could, they have uh, resources that support. But the they department. also have so, trustee responsibility. Absolutely, they have they they they. And actually, that's a good point, Governor, because you were instrumental in the in the creation of OHA, and you, the vision should be, OHA needs to be more self. Uh, self-govern in other words yeah, sure. move towards sure. that so having these conversations with oha with dhhl with our native hawaiian trusts 
should be happening, and perhaps, you know, as the neutral party in this, CNHA can, can be the convener. Well, I hope that CNHA is a little bit more than a neutral party. I, I hope that you're the catalyst for this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I knowing you, I, I personally, uh, I think that you, you would do a very good job as being, uh, as being a catalyst. I mean, there are very few people who have your talent to talking to all, you know, all people involved mm -hmm. from whatever walks of life, you know? And um, plus you got trained at OHA. And if you can survive <laughs> OHA, my goodness, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. this should be an easy, easy <laughs> job. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, you know, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, your vision. Tell me a little bit about where you want to see everything well, be in, a, in 10 years from now. So I shared with you ultimately where I think there's value, and that's that leadership academy. But to get there, before we even get there, I plan to embark on a community strategic planning. So we're engaging stakeholders at different levels to discuss, uh, and so that can be a part of the development of CNHA's strategic plan going forward. So we'll be launching a strategic plan for leaders, for community to come together and discuss uh, what is CNHA's future? What is our vision going forward? Yeah, what I want is them to your be part role of it. in right. this uh, milieu of... Right. The other thing I didn't mention is that CNHA is actually a member-based organization. So we have over 130 uh, Native Point organizations, businesses and otherwise, that fall under our umbrella. So working closely with those members. So the well, members... this is a very important point. Yeah. I, I want to emphasize it. So CNHA actually is made up of 130... Yep. member organizations. And it's growing. So since I've come on board, we've brought on about 25 new members into under CNHA. Oh, wow. So we're growing. But the, are these all Native Hawaiian organizations? Yes, they all are. Well, they're Native Hawaiians, yes. Yeah. So the cool thing about CNHA is they're actually, it's actually governed by the members. So the board of directors are made up of that membership. The, 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 the board of directors decides who's the CEO, who executes. How are the board of directors selected? They have they have bylaws and they have a process in which they but basically, but basically through, by election. through election at convention right so around that time they have a conversation about who's going to be a part of the board of directors um, so it's a very democratic process uh, and it's a member owned really if you will um, organization so the members just are on the board and the board controls the organization's uh, direction so okay just to recap. Um, we are, you're, you're, you're going to have a convention mm -hmm. in October. Mm -hmm. Now, are anyone is anyone invited, or uh, is it is everyone it by is invited invitation, to or no. how is it done? Everyone is invited to attend. We will be posting information on our website, uh, HawaiianCouncil.org. You can HawaiianCouncil.org. Org. Yep. You go to that website. There'll be background on the convention, and we plan to put the registration process up shortly. We're just we're just solidifying all the speakers and engagement. The other thing I want to tell you is we talked a little bit about convention having this policy theme. There's also cultural activities, enrichment right. activities. There's you can learn how to create kahili. You can uh, go on a huakai with Lily Kala, Kame Elihiva. She's going to have a bus that takes her on Waikiki, talking about the birthing places of all of our Ali. Yeah, so because that was a summer area for our Ali. So she's going to take a group on a huakai, a, a field trip through Waikiki. There's all kind of activities. There's something oh, for much, everyone. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for agreeing to join us. And it's not, you know, it's not very often that we get to talk to somebody at the beginning of their tenure. And, uh, you know, I want to wish you well. I, I know from what you've done in the past, I expect that you you, you'll be a success with uh, uh, the Council on Native Hawaiian Advancement as well. So thank you. Thanks, Coach. And everybody, here's your chance. Take part. Support the—I uh, love the idea about the academies, by the way. Thank you. Thank you.